Stella Morris, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Marianne. You have been so stalwart in your loyalty and in your support of Julian, both publicly as well as privately. You've let a lot of people know what's going on with the trial and how we can help. What are the things that you most want people to know, not only about Julian, but about what's happening to him? Well, the dirty little secret of extradition cases is that they are 90% uh, politics and just 10% law. And that's why it is essential in this case for people really to understand that it is a political persecution that is not pursuing um, any legitimate uh, purpose other than to persecute a man, a publisher, for having published the truth to the public. Um, And that it sets a precedent that is going to be used against the rest of the press. Uh, This case was initiated by the Trump administration after the Obama administration looked into it and decided there was no criminality to pursue there uh, and commuted Chelsea Manning's sentence. And then it was under the Trump administration uh, in the context of the Trump administration's war on free speech, on press freedom, uh, that they initiated this case. And it is... um, the Biden administration, which is now furthering, continuing Trump's most, the Trump administration's most dangerous legacy. If this case reaches trial in the United States, it is going to reach a Virginia court, uh, Virginia National Security Court, essentially, where no person has, has successfully defended from a national security case. He, he faces a 175 year center, sentence. There is no public interest defense. Uh, it is uh, an automatic uh, offense basically uh, under the theory that this administration and the, and the Trump administration before that is advancing to publish true information about the government. And that will, Uh, propel the United States into a completely different um, uh, polity, uh, a a country that does not um, permit an open and free uh, um, discussion, inquiry into what the government does. And that is no longer a free and open society. You've been very vocal about the role of the CIA throughout this process. What do people need to know about that? Well, it was an incredible bombshell report that came out in September uh, and that some of the press have been ignoring completely. But it is, to my mind, probably the most important story of the year, which is that under the directorship of Mike Pompeo, uh, Mike Pompeo, who is uh, preparing to run for president, Uh, as a Republican candidate and is a dictator in waiting, under the directorship of Mike Pompeo, the CIA had plotted to assassinate Julian in London and that the CIA had uh, actually carried out a a comprehensive attack on WikiLeaks. One aspect was ultimately to assassinate him. Another one was uh, plans to kidnap him and the kidnapping plans were well advanced and uh, a disinformation campaign of planting false information in the press. Uh, and that part of the, of the campaign was carried out, uh, culminating in the publication of a front page fabricated story about Paul Manafort um, uh, allegedly having met Julian three times in the embassy. It was completely false, but the Guardian published it on the, on the front page um, and Uh, This was just one of so many publications of so many false stories that were published during this period when uh, Mike Pompeo uh, was director of the CIA and, well, up until Julian's arrest, I would say. Uh, And so Julian's arrest, his incarceration and his extradition is uh, has been taken as a result uh, out of this, um, as a result of this CIA uh, campaign, uh, which triggered an indictment, uh, according to this story, it it wasn't that there was a, a 
legal process against Julian and the CIA was somehow involved in that. No, the CIA was out to crush WikiLeaks uh, because of what it had published, because of its role in um, publishing true information about the CIA and about uh, uh, government and military uh, corruption and, and war crimes, uh, that the CIA wanted to kill Julian and to imprison him. And they've managed to imprison him and Julian could spend the rest of his life in prison uh, because of these uh, elements within the US um, uh, system that are enemies of free speech, enemies of, of a free press that wants to keep government accountable and that is able to keep govern government accountable. And the US is the foremost, uh, the country with the strongest free speech and press, uh, free press protections in the world. And uh, if, if this case is allowed to go forward, then, um, you know, Julian will not be the only journalist in prison in the United right. States. There's been a lot of misinformation about the case from the very, very beginning. But there's also core to that has been a lot of misinformation about Julian himself. Uh, one of the ways the public has been distracted from the real issues is with this narrative. Well, you know, he's not really a good guy. Mm -hmm. Who is the Julian that you know? What do you want us to know about him as a man and as a publisher? Well, Julian is the precise opposite of what he's being portrayed as. You take a person, uh, this is a, a typical attack um, method. You take a person and their most uh, salient virtues and then you reverse them and then you try to portray them as the reverse. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's a, a typical smear tactic. And Julian, well, he is precisely the opposite of all those things uh, that, they, that they pretend that he is. Julian is the most principled man I know. He is kind, he is compassionate, he cares about the world being a better place. He cares about giving information to people so they are able to defend themselves, so that they are able to form their own opinions with the truth. Uh, he, he believes in individual autonomy, in people's uh, ability to act uh, through their own intelligence and their own understanding of the world. And that's why he has made uh, his uh, life's mission to give people a better understanding of the world around them. For people who are listening to you now and really feel in their hearts that what you're saying and what others are saying here is true and that we as citizens must act, what are the things that we as average people can do? What would you have us do? as Americans and as people in other countries as well, to try to make a difference, to turn this thing around? Well, look, this fight for Julian's freedom, it is the most important fight that you can engage in. I was born in South Africa. My parents were involved in the anti-apartheid struggle. And that fight this has um, defined their lives and who they are and because they did something that they considered so meaningful. And this fight is so meaningful because Julian's freedom is connected to all our freedoms. Julian is a freedom fighter. He fights for your right to know. And that's why they've put him in prison because they're attacking your right to know. And out of our right to know flows all our other rights, our own ability to determine our own future. And I must say that uh, the support is really growing all over. I've seen people who have been standing on the sidelines, who have been silent uh, for years, observing, observing this travesty unfold, and who have now decided to come out and say the obvious, that this is a travesty, that this is the greatest injustice um, that the US is engaging in uh, against uh, one of its own. And um, one of the greatest, I mean, there, there, there's a war on truth uh, and on true information. And Julian is at the center of it. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the fact that people have been now coming out is because of all the work, all the uh, efforts of regular people who are doing 
uh, all they can to free Julian. And that's what it takes. It takes people, uh, yes, calling their representatives, but also, you know, uh, putting posters up in their local cafes, uh, you know, correcting people when they're, when they're not, um, when they're misinformed, um, you know, engaging in the issue, donating money, uh, you know, in, in so many different ways and just making this issue as urgent as it, as it is because Julian is uh, in a, he's been in, this is, will be the third uh, Christmas that he's spent in Belmarsh prison. He is being accused of, of doing journalism and it can cost him his life. It will cost him his life if this isn't stopped. And the Biden administration has to feel the pressure from its own electorate uh, to put a stop to this now, because it, it, it is uh, Trump's most dangerous and lasting legacy, and it could be permanent, and it can change uh, the, the, um, the course of American history. Thank you very much, Stella. I'm sure that other than Julian, uh, those of you who are in his close family are feeling the most pain, and that you show up the way you do such as you are tonight, to make sure that despite your own personal um, pain around all this, you want people to know what they need to know. Thank you so much for helping. And we all wish you the very best. Thank you.